Hi everyone, it's Stephen here. In this video, I explain what you need to do step by step to not pay VAT on a commercial investment property and also a vacant commercial property. What you'll need in place before you submit anything to HMRC, what to submit to make sure you get it right first time to avoid delays, and how to fast track it if you're in a bit of a rush and you want an outcome in about seven days. I recently bought several commercial investment properties that all had plus VAT on the listings, but I didn't pay a single penny in VAT. So stick around until the end to find out how you can do it too, because this is a how-to video, not just a what can be done video. I'm not an accountant or a tax advisor, so please speak to a professional for specific advice to your situation. So let's get into it. So commercial properties advertised with plus VAT on the listing means that you have to pay VAT on top of the agreed purchase price. If a commercial property is tenanted though, you can disregard paying VAT on top of the purchase price. This is because you can transfer that commercial property as a going concern, often abbreviated to TOGC, which means transfer of a going concern. I'm gonna to explain to you in a second how you can do it step by step and how to fast track it, but I also wanna mention if you're buying a vacant commercial property, you have to pay VAT on top of the agreed purchase price for that property. But make sure that you're buying it in a VAT registered business. This way you can claim the VAT back after you've paid for it. So there's a bit of a time delay there between when you're having to pay for it and when you can claim it back. But otherwise, you're essentially still buying that property without paying VAT, even though it's vacant. But let's now focus on how to do a transfer of a going concern on a commercial investment property step by step. So these are the things you're gonna to need to have in place before you do anything. You're gonna to have to set up a VAT registered company and make sure you got that VAT number to hand before you do anything else. You're also gonna to need to know the seller's VAT registration company number, and you're also gonna to need to have a copy of the title and the plan associated with the property that you're buying. So once you've got all this information together, you're then opting to tax the property. That's what we're trying to do when we transfer as a going concern. So there's a form that you need to fill in from HMRC, and this is called VAT 1614A, and I'll put a link to that below in the description. So then we start to go to HMRC's website, and we can fill in this form all online. As we step through this form then, we're gonna to need to know the name of the company that you're looking to buy the property in. So we fill that in there. Is it based in the UK or not? Yes or no? Fill in the details of the address for that company, the phone number for yourself. Have you appointed a UK tax representative? So do you have an accountant? Yes or no? Pick the relevant one there. So if you're doing this yourself, you probably put no. Are you submitting this form as an electronic attachment with your online application for VAT registration? In this example, I'm saying no because I'm not applying for VAT registration on the company at the same time as doing an option to tax because we've done it beforehand. Are you registered for VAT? Yes, I'll be saying. And then I put in there the VAT registration number for the company that's buying the commercial property. Then we've got, have you made exempt supplies of any land or buildings which you're looking to option to tax? Put no in this example. Then we put in here the details of the commercial property that we're looking to buy. So we put the address in there and the postcode. Well, do we have the land registry number? Yes, we do. So we want to put, put yes for that. And then we want to put in the land registry title number there. Are we submitting a plan with that title? Yes, we are. And we also want to put the effective date of that option to tax. So when do we want this to start? If we're buying this at auction, we'd be putting it at the date that we're submitting this option to tax ideally before you're buying it. It always needs to be the date before you exchange contracts on this particular thing, otherwise you can't transfer as a going concern. Then we tick the declaration blocks, put in the name of the person filling in the form, and then you need to print it and sign this form, date it, and then scan it and save it as a PDF. Once we've done all of that, we're gonna be sending an email to HMRC because we wanna do all this digitally. We don't wanna send a letter in a post and all of that old, old way of doing stuff. So the email address to send this to, I'm gonna put on the screen here and I'm also gonna put a link to it below in the description for you. In that email, we're also gonna be attaching the title and the plan for the commercial property that we're buying as we've said we would do. So here's an example of an email that I've used when I'm sending this information to HMRC. So it just says, Dear HMRC, notification of option to tax by company name and your VAT registration number. And then you're attaching the title number to exercise the option to tax on the property and you put the property address there and then you put the with effect from date for the option to tax. And this is important to make sure that this lines up with the form. This cannot be a date 
further away than 90 days from today. So you can't go back in time more than 90 days. You also wanna be highlighting that you're attaching the title and plans for that particular property. So the with effect from date is important, especially if you're buying at auction, you wanna make sure that that date is before the auction date. So don't worry about option to tax properties and not being successful with the bidding or if you don't complete on the purchase, because as long as you do it within six months, you can revoke that option to tax on that particular property or it will just lapse anyway after six years. Now you can use an account to do all this for you and that's what I did the first few times when I bought my commercial investment properties because I had no idea about this process or what to do. So do that if you're a bit worried about the process and you're not confident about it, but I'm trying to give you everything here that you need to do if you want to do it on your own. So they charged me £200 plus VAT. It's not too expensive if you want to go via an account and just for your first time. But my most recent purchase, I actually forgot all about this bit of the process to it because I got so much in the weeds with the actual property purchase. The, the transfer of a going concern bit, I forgot a bit about. And so then it got towards the end and then I saw the contract of sale and it said that I was paying VAT on it. So I had to go to my sister and say, no, I'm not paying VAT. I'm doing a transfer of going concern because it's tenanted. So I had to quickly submit this form to HMRC and escalate it as much as possible because I wanted to get this done within about seven days because I was only a couple of weeks away from the date that we were trying to aim for completion. Interestingly, on one of my first purchases, I reached out to the accountant because this was dragging on for months. And I, you know, the seller was getting a bit worried about, am I still buying it? What's happening? Why is it taking so long? We were in a pandemic, so things did take longer. But either way, the accountant came back to me and said, no, there's no way to chase this up. There isn't a way to contact HMRC. We just have to wait for the letter to come in the post. <laughs> uh, back then, I had no idea whether this was right or wrong, but subsequently I know as a load of rubbish because you can actually chase HMRC, which I'm about to show you now, how to fast track it, how to escalate it, and get that outcome in about seven days. But I wanna highlight something here that's quite important. You have to make sure you get this option to tax before you exchange any contracts on anything, before you buy a property at auction, before you exchange contracts on a commercial property, because if it's not, you're then gonna be paying VAT and you cannot transfer it as a going concern. And as I said before, you wanna make sure your solicitor is understanding that you're buying this property and transferring it as a going concern. So they need to notify the seller that that's what you're trying to do and also put it in a contract of sale. So if you don't fancy waiting around for a letter in the post from HMRC, this is what you need to do to fast track it and get an outcome and you can potentially get an outcome in seven days. What we need to do is send another email and this one's gonna have some additional evidence attached to it. So if you've agreed to buy commercial property, what you're gonna have is a contract of sale. This can be drafted by your solicitor or their solicitor, but it will be a draft contract of sale and at this point, you can attach this to your email. And in the subject line, we wanna be stating that it's urgent, then we put the plus sign, and then we put evidence attached, plus sign, email correspondence, and then keep the rest of the subject line as we did the previous one. And what I do with this is I take the original email and I forward that same email with this new email. And then I would state in that email, the further to the information below, please treat this matter as urgent as the property has been sold and is going through the final stages of the transaction, draft contract attached. Then we say that the party's names are on the attached contract and when the completion date is. We also include the seller's VAT registration number and the company details. Then we say, please can send all future correspondence to your best email address in there. So there's a disclaimer that you need to add into the email that tells HMRC that you wanna converse via email and that you understand the risks of doing sensitive information via email. You put that disclaimer in there, then they'll respond back to you via email rather than sending a letter out in the post. Then we wanna make sure we've attached that contract of sale. So once we've submitted that, the next step to fast track it is we need to then call HMRC. So the number to call I'm gonna put on the screen here and I'm also gonna to link to it below in the description. So this phone call could take a while. It's best to call first thing in the morning, actually. I actually asked the person, when's the best time to call? Well, I was on the phone for about an hour. And first thing in the morning, he said, something like eight o'clock, I think they're open from 8.30. Anytime between eight and nine, jump on the call, and you could probably get through in a quicker time than an hour. So once you've got them on the phone, you just wanna make sure that they've got the emails that you've sent. And make sure they've got all the information they need and make sure that they're then gonna assign it to like a caseworker, someone that's gonna work on your particular option to tax. They then may ask you to send any additional information by email for attention of a particular person's name, 
which you can then do quite easily by following their instructions. But then once you've called them up, they've then assigned it to someone. And what you'll find is that you'll then get a decision within 24 to 48 hours after that. And they'll send it to you electronically. You don't have to wait for a letter in the post or anything like that. You get a letter and it will look something like this. So this is what I did only a few months ago from now. So it's fairly up to date if you're looking at this video in, in 2022. Obviously things will change over time, but this is the process that I went through and I was able to fast track it and get an outcome within seven days. If you wanna know what I look for in a commercial investment property and the numbers around a recent deal that I bought, go and check this video out. Also, if you're looking to understand a bit more about my strategy for finding 10% yields on commercial investment properties, go and check this video out. Thanks so much for watching, I really do appreciate it and I'll see you next time.